Welcome to Need for Speed Heat. We are back with a new video, but before the video starts, I want to say a quick thank you for your support recently. You guys have been absolutely mega. We've just hit 1.5 million subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your support. I want to thank you all individually. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. Right, so let's jump into this video. So this is a comparison between grip and drift handling in Need for Speed Heat. The handling in this game is so different to Payback. It, it needs a video, it needs a, a devoted video to explain how it works. So first, we're gonna start with a 370 and grip. So grip suspension, grip differential, and grip tires. That is what we're gonna do. So you see all the different suspensions, you'll see the dot moving around so you can track where it's going to go once you put that part into the car we want to get into the bottom left hand corner that's the ultimate grip build so smack between road and race that's what you want maybe when you get a certain car you may like it in the middle you may like it halfway between road and race it's yeah it, 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 it may depend on what you want depends i've not even looked at off-road yet so please don't ask me i've got no idea i've got no idea we are very close though to having, to having a perfect grip build if we put the differential in uh we're gonna go for maybe track track's pretty good that's almost perfect it's not spot on it's not perfectly in the corner it's near enough what we want though i'm fairly happy with that uh, by the way, the visual customization I'm not really sure about in terms of the 370. I think I screwed up. It doesn't look that great when I watched it back. I apologize. <laughs> I would probably do it very differently. If you guys want to see this build though, uh, let me know. Please. We're chucking everything into it. Just adding as much parts as possible. I had about one million dollars to spend and I was going to spend them a lot on this car. A lot on this car. So let's go tonight and let's check out the grip build for the 370. This is full grip with neon lights as well, as you can see. This grey does not look that grey at night. It really doesn't. It really doesn't as well. It looks atrocious. But we're going to see the comparison so clear, especially when you actually physically play the game. It's so different. So different. So again, this is full, full grip. You can still engage a drift by dropping the clutch. So that's by pressing the right trigger twice. You can still engage a drift. Depending on the car, sometimes that doesn't even work. So it can be so planted and so grippy, it won't even do that. But this is a 370, all the power goes to the rear wheels. So it can, it can drift still. So I'm making my way to a race. I don't know if I do the exact... Oh, Flamingo, there we go. Flamingo! So we get bank and rep for that. So let's go to a race. And let's uh, see how we do. I quite like the sound, though. I must admit. I just don't like what I've done with the... The mods, the defenders, the rib, bumper. I don't know what I've done to this car. I think I've ruined it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> I think actually my customization at the event really wasn't that great. I don't know. I looked back and I'm like, what have I done? Maybe I was a, a bit tight for time. Maybe I rushed a bit. I don't know. I just sort of saw like cool parts and put them on. And don't you look at the car as a whole? If that makes sense? Anyway, prestige. This is a race. We need 220. And we've got 246. So a car is more than good enough remember this is a full grip build oh yes you'll see drift is interesting <laughs> it's really difficult in a race scenario to have a drift car it really is where this car is planted it's grippy it's ready to race let's do this uh, by the way, there's no spoilers in this gameplay at all. It just, it feels hooked up. You have confidence in the car. This is by far the best grip 
handling I've ever felt. That was probably my fault there. The best grip handling ever in Elite Speed. Or at least recent memory. In terms of ghost games, anyway. It just felt really good. When you have the car handling set up perfectly, I just had so much confidence. Where in previous games, the car would lock up. And I would just, I'd be a sitting duck at times. It was really difficult. Where with this car, this build, I could keep pushing and pushing and pushing. It was fun, a lot of fun. Coming through! You just, you just hook it up, you can just go, 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 and go. There we go, I didn't even drift there. Like, the previous games, I would have drifted for days. I would have plowed into everything. But now the car is planted, it is ready. And we're going to see a, a completely different comparison between this and Drift. You're going to see it's completely different. You can see it in the gameplay, let alone actually playing it. I must admit, second place though is keeping me honest, considering I've got a pretty good car right now. This is a highly upgraded, a lot of money has been ploughed into this car. Lola's keeping me honest. I'm not going to lie. This is slightly embarrassing. <laughs> You just see that I'm very confident. I'm not really breaking that much at all. Yeah, there we go. Nothing really happened. No, the start was a little bit shaky, but once I got going, simple. Probably wasn't the perfect race to show off grip. There was quite a lot of very light, swoopy corners. Is that, is that a good word? So let's go to the garage and let's switch out all the parts. Well, not all the parts. The parts that make the, t the car turn into a drift car. So suspension, tyres and differential. This is not a perfect comparison. I would like the dot to be in the right hand corner, the bottom right hand corner. I file with that and I'm more leading towards uh, drift, the drift line in the middle. So that's not a perfect comparison, but the car is definitely a drift car in brackets. So it's, it's a fairly good comparison. I would like to do a comparison maybe with the car in the middle between race and drift. That would have been quite cool. So, how does drift work in this game? Good question. So, you lift off the accelerator, the right trigger, get back on it, full power, and it drifts. That's basically how the drift works. I would argue it's almost impossible to win a race with a drift setup. Yeah, that's, that is mind-boggling. That is so different to Payback and 2015. So, so different. Where Drift was actually quicker. You get a boost as well in the previous games. That's gone. It's crazy. It's a completely different handling model. It's so different. And it's definitely a, a big, a big learning curve, but a reasonable learning curve with the drifting now. You see, I, I can't even keep the car straight at times. That's how drifty it gets. It's so difficult to manage that power and to go around corners in a quick fashion. It's so tricky. It's interesting though. It is interesting. It's um, a different take for sure. I said this in my, my previous videos. I'd say drifting probably, for me at the moment anyway, isn't as fun as previous games. I'm just going to come out and say it. But I need more time with it, so I don't want to like get too like, oh no, it's, it's not fun. I need more time with it. I didn't really get much of a chance to experiment with the drift builds on certain cars. Yeah. But anyway, let's do a race with a drift build and let's compare. Even the start, your tires are just spinning up. It's just, you can't move. It's crazy. So you get really bad starts. Oh man, it's such a it's so hard to put into words how different it is. I think this might actually be the same race. So it's not too bad there, but it's just you don't have the boost after a drift, so you just end up staying in the same place. And you don't really move forward. So I'm trying to progress and I can't do it. It's it's yeah. It's weird. <laughs> it's, it's it's so different. So different. So you have to have 
a grip car, at least in the middle, at least, between grip and drift, to really win a race, I would say. Honestly. You can go in a straight line, of course, that's completely fine. That is obviously my fault, sorry. <laughs> oh, I think that was. Just ploughed into the back of it. It's it's going to be tricky. I want to, I'd be interested to maybe watch someone try and win with a drift car. It's going to be tricky. I, I'm not, I'm of course going to try it. I'm not particularly racing that well right now. No doubt about that. But it's a struggle. You see the cars behind me, because obviously he's got a grip car. He just ploughs into the back of me because he's like, Where, what are you doing? You're so slow. And I'm just standing in the same place. My tyres are spinning, but I'm not moving. Because the tyres are too slick and they've got no grip on them. Tyres are must. Tyres are probably a big factor, actually, in how your car does handle. See, it, it just drifts there. I don't even want to drift. I'm trying to go straight, and it's still drifting automatically. Where grip was so, so different. I know another YouTuber went to the event, and he said, I believe, is about seven seconds quicker with a grip car. How crazy is that? For a Need for Speed game where drift was always king, it's now not the king, especially in terms of a race. But I do need to spend more time with a drift car, really try and manage the power and see how I get on. But in terms of a race, grip is now king. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe and bye-bye.